Hi, this is Yann Camus from Bliss Climbing and today I want to show you how I operate the Beel Escaper because a third of the people seem to say that it doesn't work after there's a too long of a rappel. Also, I will show you something that has been displayed in Andy Kirkpatrick's book, Down. It, it should blow your mind. So the Beel Escaper, uh, I've used it with normal dynamic ropes of all sorts and also some uh, semi-static ropes and uh, it always worked out for me even if sometimes I was doubtful. So let's start with the setup. A standard rappel anchor would be two bolts or two glue-ins. If it's two bolts there will be some wrap rings. It could be two chains and a single wrap ring, well, in that case, you're golden with the Beeless Caper. But if you have two like this, you take the Beeless Caper out of its pouch, you clip the pouch back to your harness, you don't need it, then the Beeless Caper is not made to go in between two wrap rings like this that are separated by a certain distance. So what I do is I can use the escaper like this. So I pass the escaper in one wrap ring and then I pass the rope in this um, kind of prusik knot. It's um, Chinese cuffs uh, principle and uh, yeah. You get used to passing the rope in those, in this kind of friction, friction knot that's permanent on the Beeless Caper. By the way, you want to make sure that the elastic band here has plenty of life in it because if it cuts or if it is not working properly, then you will not be able to recover your rope. Okay, so I pull it like this. There's a black marker uh, that's made here. And when I pull on it, um, this black marker has to be outside the knot. If it's inside, it's not as safe. Uh, so it's just a gauge to know that it's safe or not. And for now, we'll put a kind of backup. So um, pigtail or let me know what's the name of this knot in the comments. All right. And now I'm ready to put my rope on the Beeless Caper. So the knot you want to do here, there's many of them, but someone told me uh, that there's a simple one. So let me know what's the name of this knot. I pass the rope in that loop there. I go around once and I pass it just once here. Uh, so when I pull on the rope, it uh, locks the end uh, completely. Now, this knot is not that safe just built like that. You need a backup, but luckily you can do a Yosemite finish, uh, which is super simple and is, in my opinion, safe enough for that knot, that specific knot. So you go to the front here, and to the back, you just finish the knot here, and then you pull. To me, it's really safe enough and so simple. So whoever told me to use that, thank you so much. So there's, there's often two people wrapping on this anchor there. So what you can do is the first person can have full-blown backups. So the knot here and a backup here. So probably a quick draw like this. So the first person goes down and then if the second person deems it safe, then he can get the quick draw back. And don't forget to undo this backup knot here because otherwise no chance you get your rope back. That said, it's not a good idea to trust a single bolt um, blindly. So now let's see two examples 
outside. This is a 60 meter wrap entirely. So what you need to do is to release really quickly your rope so it jerks up like crazy because the energy wave that you release here has to go all the way up to the beel escaper. So what I do initially is in order to not hurt my hand is I build an overhand knot like this and I will grab just the knot, not, not the loop because I risk hurting a little bit more my fingers. So I hold the knot, I pull hard and I can do a double tug is what I do and then I release and it jumps up. I have to let it go. If I can't let it go because I'm on a multi-pitch and I can't let go of the rope, then I have to tie the end there to me so I can retrieve it at each time I tug. So that was one tug. So on this rappel, I was pretty sure that everything would go without a problem. But I had to pull, I counted on the video, I think it's 54 times before the rope in the end came down. And I think the big problem was the shape of the cliff. The rope was touching in at least two places. So right at the top, the lip is really rounded. Yeah, my knot is useless because, because I'm pulling much higher now. Yeah, now you're gonna move the knot up. Ah. Yeah. So right at the top, the lip is really rounded and the rope starts at um, not horizontal, but maybe 30 degrees. And then it's rounded up to the lip. The lip is rounded and then it goes down, straight down for about 50, 55 meters to another lip. And then it goes much steeper, overhung. So the rope touches twice, really at the bottom and really at the top. So once I really needed it to work, I walked back uh, to clear the bottom edge and then it took only seven pulls to get the rope back down. Obviously the total was 54. Normally it's around 20 pulls that are required to get your rope back. But I really looked at what I was doing. Yeah. And I thought everything was perfect. Well, you showed me and you said, I got to take this knot out. Yes. It could okay. be the double edges too. Oh, look. <laughs> I was ye, quitting. Ye of little faith. Oh. I'm sorry, Jan. Oh. I was doubting you. So yeah, 54 was probably the worst in my life. And I've used the Beelis Caper, I don't know, a hundred times, maybe. So imagine yourself on a multi-pitch climb where you have this wrap to do, but you're on a hanging belay. You cannot walk back to clear the rock and be able to pull efficiently on the Beelis Caper, and you risk to be stuck there. This is a grim situation. So think about it before you leave with only the Beelis Caper as your solution for a rappel. Now look at this other example where it worked perfectly. So here we are at the top of Amphitheater and I'll show you uh, the anchor is there. So pretty horizontal, maybe 20 degrees going up and then it goes all the way like straight line to the lip and it goes down in the void for about 50-ish uh, meter and I set up the Beelis Caper and I'll show you so this is Beelis Caper it will remove this car these carabiners that are a backup and this knot that is the backup in the system and uh, I will trust uh, the system with my life and pull it from down there. Go. Oh, release. Let's pull. Release. You see how it, it goes all the way to the top? Yeah. 
So it really unloads completely at the belay anchor. That must be five. Ten. Eight. Eight. Well, that's it. There it comes. And now I will show you a trick that I read in the down book by Andy Kirkpatrick and that blew my mind. It's, it's quite easy to do and it can make the Beel Escaper more useful in some situations. For example, what if you don't trust just one of this bolt here? What if you want to use both of them? Or what if you have a big tree? and you want to go around that tree with the Beel Escaper, well, the Beel Escaper has a short uh, rope here, and it's sh too short to do this kind of trick. But I will show you how to extend it. So the first step of this method is I attach my rope to the Beel Escaper. So I do my knot and I take more than enough rope so I do my knot, okay, and I check the length. I don't do the, the Yosemite finish uh, right now. I just check the length. So right now, the end is not enough to go past the normal Beel Escaper rope length. So I need to extend it quite a bit. So I need to go probably two and a half feet to extend the Beel Escaper by one and a half feet. So let's check it out now. Okay, now it's long enough. I have three feet more of uh, rope than my Beel Escaper. So I do my Yosemite finish. Okay. Yosemite finish done. Then I will extend my Beel Escaper with my rope. How do I do that? What I need to do is to make sure that I have some loose right here with the, the elastic band and everything because otherwise it will not function. And actually I just want a foot and a half more of the rope compared to the Beel Escaper. So that's what I do here. Okay, and now I just do a figure eight uh, to attach my rope and the Beel Escaper. So like this, nice figure eight. Okay. I put tension in the figure eight everywhere. Okay, so here is the setup. Now I have the rope going to the Beel Escaper. I have some loose parts. If I pull completely on the Beel Escaper, the rope is still loose. This is what I need. There's the figure eight here, and there's the longer end of rope that goes there. I don't use the Beel Escaper rope anymore. I just go through both anchor points or maybe a tree or whatever I need. Uh, I need here to have not too much friction, so maybe I would not do it with some rocks. With some rocks, I want to do other methods. And then I pass my rope in the Beel Escaper. So now that's where there could be a problem uh, with the compatibility between the Beel Escaper and my rope. And this is where you should be wary. And you, you will see if you buy the Beel Escaper that the end of its rope has a special design. It's made to slip, slip easily at the end, which is not the case with my rope necessarily. So, but uh, I've used this extension method uh, at least twice uh, that I remember, and it worked both times. And it was 
both times were with uh, with tree a tree that I wanted to wrap from. And then I put my wrap system. I don't usually wrap with the Revo, but this is what I have Andy on my table. So let's do that. So I put my weight and now I can manually close the Revo and see if my knot uh, cinches. I wouldn't do that without a backup, obviously, on the cliff. So once you're on it, you can wiggle left and right, see what's going on with the system, if it slips or if anything looks wrong. Uh, the length of the rope that exits the Beelis caper has to be as at least as long as the black marker and the end of the Beelis caper. Make sure you have a rope that is suitable for the Beelis caper. Hard to know exactly, so be careful out there. And Last but not least, uh, you have to pull and release. See if uh, the Bill Escaper lets you get your rope back in that situation. Um, so for me here, it's a yes. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and go see my website, glissclimbing.com, uh, where you'll get some top rope soloing and lead rope soloing courses. Thank you.